Welcome to New Directions in the Assessment and Management of Patients with Alzheimer's Disease, presented by the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University at NeuroSeries Live. My name is Dr. Pierre Terrio. I'm Research Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Arizona and Director of the Banner Alzheimer's Institute, and I'm very pleased to serve as Activity Director for this important educational program. Today's session is a live, interactive program that allows us to take questions in real time throughout the presentation. We encourage you to send us your questions anytime by typing them in the box located at the lower left-hand side of your screen. Joining me in today's discussion is my friend and colleague, Dr. Marwan Sabah. Dr. Sabah is Research Professor of, Psychiatry, of Neurology at the University of Arizona and director of the Banner Sun Health Research Institute. Welcome, Marwan. Thank you for having me, Pierre. S sorry for the accidental That's promotion. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to talk about, so we're going to get started, and Marwan is going to drive at the beginning. We want to keep this pretty informal and interactive sure. and keep those questions coming. Thank you again for having me. Pierre, we're going to talk a lot about uh, on the front end, more on the diagnostics, and figure out how the landscape is changing in that regard. I start with this slide because I want to show the audience that Alzheimer's disease is growing not just in incidence and frequency but in morbidity and mortality. And if you look at the fourth bar, you see it is skyrocketing whereas other diseases, uh, including heart disease, stroke, and cancer are actually going down in morbidity mm -hmm. and mortality, suggesting that we have not really made a big headway in terms of reducing it. So this is why the World Health Organization called Alzheimer's disease the pandemic of the West. I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, assessment okay. clearly. So the other thing that's changing is our understanding of Alzheimer's is the way you and I were taught is that we Alzheimer's is really represented the dementia stage but we're starting to recast the dementia or the disease as the entire spectrum from the preclinical phase to the MCI mild cognitive impairment to the dementia so that encompasses the entire spectrum of Alzheimer's disease. So kind of obvious in retrospect that this is a continuum that goes on for many years, but we have been heavily focused on dementia. Correct, yeah. and uh, we're seeing a new focus on MCI and preclinical. So the uh, construct of dementia it really started, uh, really is being recast in 2011 after a discussion starting in 1984. The, the concept of dementia is the category of disease. Dementia is by in definition impairment bad enough to cause functional impairment and it includes a change from previous level of functioning. So the idea of Alzheimer's dementia starts with the concept of dementia and you must involve two areas of cognition which are listed here. So no functional decline, no dementia. Correct. And okay. we may, if there is impairment, we might call that mild cognitive impairment, but we, to rise to the level of uh, dementia must have functional impairment. Okay. So this is the 9, 2011 and in 2011 we also recast the uh, clinical diagnostic criteria for Alzheimer's disease not to be the tiered pro definitive probable possible but to say the first thing you have to have is dementia that you have in order to have probable de Alzheimer's disease you must have dementia, insidious onset, cognitive decline with including memory impairment. The consensus NIAAA criteria did not really drive a lot about using amyloid or other biomarkers uh, in, the, in the diagnosis. That is still controversial. The consensus has not settled upon that, although many in the field think that we should move forward in that way. And so we are looking at new biomarkers, which I'll discuss as we move forward. Yeah, and I think what I'd encourage our colleagues to pr in primary care to hear is that there is a fairly characteristic presentation of Alzheimer's disease, right? Yes, there Insidious is. Insidious onset, relentless progression, usually but not always memory first, Correct. getting worse over time, not, not you know, major changes in personality, not early prominent neurological correct. features. That is correct. That's usually Alzheimer's type that dementia be later in life. Yeah. Uh, a different group called the International Working Group, uh, led by Bruno Dubois, had a little more declarative involvement of uh, use and incorporation of uh, biomarkers. So they also agree on a uh, construct of memory, progressive memory impairment with objective loss, but they also included the possibility of including CSF, PET, amyloid, uh, APOE as something that could drive 
improving the diagnostic confidence, and they excluded this. And this is the recast first in 2007, now in 2014. So a lot of us are starting to say that we can use with better confidence incorporation of biomarkers. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's talk briefly, Pierre, about uh, mild cognitive impairment and how it's somewhat different from Alzheimer's dementia. The first iteration of mild cognitive impairment really occurred in 1999 uh, when uh, Ron Peterson wrote the description of it. It was reset uh, in 2001. I think the best description of it actually was in 2004. And really involves that in the amnestic form of mild cognitive impairment, you see memory-driven impairment uh, corroborated by an informant but no functional impairment. And then there was some discussion uh, about whether you should include uh, other factors in the inclusion or exclusion of, uh, to uh, uh, diagnose MCI, and that's what the Albert Working Group did, uh, NIAAA criteria in 2011. What we would expect to see in mild cognitive impairment is we would expect to see a people who come in with a memory complaint corroborated by informant, objectively impaired, Usually we take cutoffs of 1.5 standard deviations below the mean, no f de overt functional impairment, no other causes of uh, cognitive decline identified. And you have give MOCA question mark here. You want to explain what that is? Yeah, so MOCA is the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. Uh, people in our field think that MOCA is more sensitive than Mini Mental. Mini yeah. Mental has floor and ceiling effects. And we're seeing a lot of movement more on MOCA. And yeah. I'm moving toward that, and I know you are too. And it's available online. Correct. You can just Google it. So this is where I feel like uh, this uh, important to really drill down what mild cognitive impairment is. And when I see a person with mild cognitive impairment, the first thing I do is get neuropsychological testing. And in my neuropsychologist, I ask them to a answer the question, is it heavily driven by memory impairment or not? And what we know is that amnestic forms of mild cognitive impairment, whether it's single or multiple domain, are most often prodromal Alzheimer's disease 99% of the time, whereas non-amnestic forms tend to be less than 50% of the time prodromal Alzheimer's. It could be medication, sleep apnea, polypharmacy, vascular, and other causes. And what has not settled upon, I think this is where the NIAA working group has really not settled upon, is really understanding how do we use biomarkers. And I right. think that if you look at this slide and look on the right column in the third, that if you have certain biomarkers, we can use them to highly inform the probability of future progression of Alzheimer's disease. But this is really in the construct of research. We're not really seeing this used, deployed in the clinic quite yet. And so we have to consider that this might become part of our practice in the future, but not, uh, not as of now. Yeah, and, and here's an interesting anecdote. Just in terms of literature, if you, if you just look at the number of publications on Alzheimer's-related biomarkers over the last few years, they went from a handful to now hundreds a year. Absolutely. So this is a very rapidly evolving Absolutely. arena. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk so about this. So but just if I could interrupt you for a second, Marwan. Uh, help me understand how you make the distinction between mild cognitive impairment and cognitive changes associated with normal aging. So that's a kind of a soft area, as you yeah. would understand. And yeah. mild cognitive impairment, we would use strict definition of on neuropsychological measures of greater than 1.5 standard deviations below the mean on age and education adjusted. But there are people who are not that impaired, right. and they have a complaint, and they may be half or one standard deviation is below the mean. We might call them AAMI, age-associated memory impairment, or AACD, age-associated cognitive decline, or there's a new construct called EMCI, early mild cognitive impairment. But that area is kind of soft right now, Pierre. There's not a, I don't think we've settled on where the dividing line is. So it's kind of like the colors in the rainbow. It is a continuum. We are obliged clinically and sometimes in research to put somebody in a category, but, but there's a fair amount of clinical judgment that's necessary. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So the good news is we're seeing a rapid progress in the development and deployment of biomarkers. And now we have CSF and PET amyloid imaging biomarkers that are actually approved and available. But we have other markers of neuronal injury, including MRI, CSF. What I have to tell you about MRI, Pierre, is that I see a lot of use of it in a screening for uh, 
exclusionary reasons, but we're not seeing true volumetry or measuring of hippocampal volume as a diagnostic or a means of incorporating changes. So I think that some of these are of interest but are not commonly deployed in the clinic. And the question really is, is it just amyloid?